Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and we're doing another top 10 video. This time it's for two-handed weapons. So the weapon of choice for, of course, warriors and then on top of that, you know, the warfarer. But before we dive into this official ranking, which will be based on stats and so therefore quantifiable, I would like to just remind you to subscribe if you haven't already. If you've watched videos on the channel before, whether it's for this game or another, or you like this game and you would like to see more videos, or whatever the case may be, if you just find it entertaining or useful or whatnot, please subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. I'm currently just over 80,000 subs and I'm trying to get over that 100,000 subscriber threshold. So if you haven't already, please do so now. With all that being said though, let's dive on into the video and get to ranking these weapons. And so starting us off with the first one on our list, which takes the number 10 spot, we have Life Taker, a sturdy greatsword fashioned of three distinct blade cores. Its left lends each blow, its heft lends each blow overwhelming power. Stats for this one are 282 for strength, 0 for magic, 100 for slash strength, 0 for strike strength, and 220 for knockdown power, giving it a composite score of 120.4. So, quite a powerful weapon, and obviously a very cool looking weapon. Uh, as far as, you know, ridiculous fantasy greatswords go, when you've got just kind of a straight big old hunk of metal like this, it's, you know, pretty standard, I would say. And so therefore looks pretty, pretty awesome in my opinion. And obviously stats on this one Make it pretty freaking powerful. So if you want to bonk your right of victory with a great big sword, the Life Taker is a great option to go with, which makes sense why it takes the number 10 spot. Uh, it should be noted before we go any further in this video that the stats that you see on the screen are affected by my player's stats, because that's how it works in this game. So you won't see the same numbers over there that I'm reading. I'm just reading the stats for the weapon, and all the weapons I'll be showing you today are upgraded all the way. So there's a little bit of variation depending where you upgrade the weapon, but these will not, uh, the stats you may see for like a level one are not going to be the same as one leveled all the way up to the uh dragon forged status so with all that being said that was number 10 let's move on to number nine and at number nine we have the flamberge quite possibly my favorite two-handed weapon in the game just because i like a good flamberge i always enjoy one no matter the game so uh it's a great sword with a saw-like blade that can rend flesh organ and bone with equal ease stats on this one are 362 for strength zero for magic 100 for slash strength, 0 for strike strength, and 252 for knockdown power, giving us a composite score of 142.8. So, a decent enough step up from the last one. It's substantially better, I would say. And obviously, looks-wise, I absolutely love the Flamberge. I think it looks excellent. Uh, this is a, I mean, I'm not going to say historically accurate weapon, because your dimensions are off on this, but design-wise, there were real historical weapons called Flamberges, which is what this is based on, that look a lot like this. So, it's an excellent weapon for for a lot of reasons. Obviously, stat-wise, it does look really cool in the game, and it does have historical authenticity on its side. So, lots of reasons to like this one, which is probably why it's my favorite, uh, but it does take the number nine spot for the best two-handed weapons in the game. And number eight, we've got our first uh, hammer out of all of these ones. So the first two were swords, this one's a hammer, and it is the Eye Crusher. Uh, a hammer designed to both bludgeon and claw, especially injurious to Cyclopean foes. So this one is excellent against Cyclopses, which, you know, might be why it has the name Eye Crusher, because what do you know uh, about Cyclops? So, strength for this one is 321, magic is 0, slash strength is 0, strike strength is 100, and knockdown power is 300, giving it a composite score of 144.2. This one, again, visually speaking, is obviously a pretty cool looking weapon. I like the great big hammer look. It's obviously not realistic, but as far as a giant maul type weapon goes, this one looks pretty sweet. Uh, and being a bonus against Cyclopses is a pretty good bonus for a weapon. So yes, they're not the most difficult of boss type foes in the game to take on, but they are probably the most common. I think I've run into more Cyclopses than any other type of boss in this game. So it's nice having a bonus against them and it does have excellent stats. So that's the Eye Crusher at number eight. And number seven, we've got another hammer type maul weapon, the Black Matter, a hammer of specially refined metal, weighty in the extreme and with concussive force to match. It is a fine choice for those with muscle to spare. Stats on this one are, 363 for strength, 0 for magic, 0 for slash strength, 100 for strike strength, and 338 for knockdown power, giving a composite score of 160.2, so a decent boost over the last one. As far as appearances on this one go, obviously pretty freaking cool. It's got a really long haft on it, which you would have to for such a ridiculously oversized maul head, but then just a great big hammerhead. So big and so long of a haft that you can kind of not even really see it all that well on my screen. But it is 
pretty cool in combat, definitely very effective, and it does make you feel quite powerful swinging this bad boy around, as long as you can make your hits connect. So that is Black Matter, which takes the number 7 spot. Let's move on to number 6. And at number 6 we are back to a sword, this time it's the Ogre's Bane, which basically just looks like an upgraded version of the Life Taker, you know, great big sword. Uh, it's a great sword commissioned by a wealthy merchant whose kin was abducted. Forged to exact vengeance, the blade cuts ogre flesh especially deeply. This one has a strength of 412, magic of 0, uh, slash strength of 100, strike strength of 0, and knockdown power of 304, giving a composite score, uh, composite score of 163.2, so just slightly better than the Black Matter. This one, I think, looks pretty cool. It's obviously much more fancy and ornate looking than the Life Taker is, and stat-wise it's obviously significant better, uh, significantly better. This one also has a boss-specific boost. This one is particularly good against ogres. I would say that's less useful overall than the one that is good against Cyclopses, just because you don't run into ogres nearly as frequently, but they are one of the more common bosses still, so, you know, you're still gonna find it being useful, uh, over the top of the fact that it is just a particularly good two-handed weapon. So that is the Ogre's Bane, which takes the number six spot. And number five, we have Griffic Victory, a great sword adept at both slicing and stabbing attacks. The chosen blade of a hero who would challenge fearsome foes. Griffic Victory has a strength of 459, zero for magic, 100 for slash strength, zero for strike strength, and 279 for knockdown power, giving it a composite score of 167.6. So just slightly above the last one, but you know, it is better. Uh, this one is also really cool looking. It looks like a very oversized version of Conan the Barbarian sword is basically what I think of when I look at it. Uh, you would think, given the name, maybe it would have a boost against griffins, but it doesn't say anything about that, even though I, uh, can see what looks like griffin claws or some sort of claw that would I would believe would come from a griffin uh, on the cross guard. That being said, it does look very cool and obviously stat wise it's an excellent weapon. So that's griffic victory at number five. And number four we have wounded heart, another sword. It's a great sword that cuts as deeply as its sinister aspect suggests. Believed to have been wrought from the flesh of the dragon's own heart. This one for stats has 532 for strength, zero for magic, 100 for slash strength, zero for strike strength, and 300 117 for knockdown power, giving it a composite score of 189.8. So, a nice jump from the last one, so this one has significantly more uh, usefulness there. As far as appearances on this one go, eh, it's okay. I don't love it. It's uh, It's got more of a thin and slightly more realistic sword vibe to it than a lot of the great swords in this game, but it's got these weird backward spike things down in the bottom that feel like they would just catch on things and not in a overly useful way, uh, more likely just to become a major hindrance. But that being said, from a fantasy and magical aspect, it is pretty cool looking. It has a gem in the, in the pommel and everything. So I do enjoy the Wounded Heart for appearances, but mostly I just like it because of its ridiculously good stats. So that's the Wounded Heart at number four. Let's move on to number three. And at number three, we have Dragon's Bite, a great sword worthy of its namesake, with an awe-inspiring blade as sharp as the dragon's fangs. The more harm the wielder takes, the stronger it becomes. Stats for Dragon's Bite are 636 for strength, 0 for magic, 100 for slash strength, 0 for strike strength, and 412 for knockdown power, giving it a composite score of 229.6. So, this one is quite good for lots of reasons. For one thing, obviously those stats are pretty solid. It makes it very strong. Another thing is, uh, the more damage you take, the more damage you'll deal with this one. So as your life gets lower, uh, you will also deal more damage with it, which is always a useful perk because, you know, that's when you need to deal the most damage because otherwise you're going to die. Uh, as far as appearances on this one go, it's very fantasy heavy. Uh, emphasis on the heavy because not only is it just oversized as hell, but when you look down at the cross guard type section, it is super thick. It looks like this thing would weigh hundreds of pounds in real life. So just ridiculous, but pretty cool looking. Despite the fact that it is super unrealistic, which normally isn't my style, this one is pretty cool as far as fantasy weapons go. And because it's formed from dragon type elements, I can suspend my disbelief and say, okay, it's using some magical dragon bone nonsense that makes it significantly lighter than it would be in real life. So Dragon's Might is pretty cool looking and it also has fantastic stats and a pretty cool perk. So that's why it takes the number three spot. Our runner up at number two is Dragon's Flight, an axe-like greatsword modeled after a dragon in flight, especially effective against the draconic species. Stats on this one are 611 for strength, zero 
0 for magic, 100 for slash strength, 0 for strike strength, 479 for knockdown power, and uh, that gives it a composite score of 238. So a decent step up from the Dragon's Bite. This one is, I don't know, it's so weird that they call it an axe-like greatsword. Yeah, some people might call that a great axe or just an axe, uh, not, not a sword. So interesting enough, it is the only axe out of all of the two-handed weapons in the game, which automatically would make it one that I quite enjoy because I've always been an axe man. People will ask you, you know, you sword, mace, and I'm like, axe every time, baby. It's got all this, it's got all the good perks of all of them, except for, I guess, uh, you know, one thing that I can think of with a good sword. But anyway, uh, the axe is pretty awesome. This one looks all right. <laughs> it's definitely heavy on the fantasy aspects. Now, you don't want to be catching with an axe because it's, uh, that's just not what you do with it. I mean, sometimes you pull, but that's what you use the beard for. On this one, you've got all these little spikes where the dragon's wings come out. That would just, I mean, they might poke in really well, but more likely they'd just break off and then you'd have slightly grabby nubs. That wouldn't be all that useful in combat, especially against armored or thick hided opponents. So very cool looking, very fantasy looking, not super realistic, but stat wise, phenomenal. One of the best weapons in the game takes the number two spot for best two handed weapons. And finally, at number one, what else could it be but the Cinder Spine, a spiked hammer imbued with the power of flame. Each strike bludgeons, lacerates, and burns, ensuring the suffering of one's foes is long indeed. Cinder Spine has strength of 479, magic of 369, slash strength of 0, strike strength of 100, and knockdown power of 323, giving it a composite score of 254.2. So this one is just, of course, ridiculously better than the rest of them because not only does it have some of the best raw physical damage in the game and excellent knockdown power, but also, you know, it lights your enemies on fire because it's got a bunch of extra fire magic damage. So that's something the rest of the two-handed weapons just don't have. Uh, so the Cinder Spine is obviously the best. As far as appearances on this one go, it's pretty cool. It looks like a great big oversized mace, which, you know, I like that. Uh, if you're playing a fantasy game as some big two-handed hand two -handed weapon wheeling brute type barbarian, why not have a big spiky flaming ball on the end of it? So that's the Cinder Spine at number one, and that is the full ranking for the top 10 two-handed weapons in this game. If you disagree with anything I've said on this in this video, or you have a weapon that I didn't list that you think is particularly great, or I listed one that you think sucks, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you want to be helpful and help any of the people that might ask, where do you get any of these weapons? If you know where to get one of these, especially a unique one or a high level one, share it. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Helps the video either way. So that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.